What's good y'all, Super Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about the most important stuff that happened on this episode of Monday Night Raw. Now, this episode was filmed, uh, pre-taped uh, last week. So I tried to stay away from spoilers as much as possible. I actually did forget that it was already uh, pre-taped. So they were still in St. Louis, but um, it was a solid show. It was kind of middle of the road show. There was some good stuff, things progressing as we get closer to Ground Jewel, future storyline starting to happen. And uh, we got a really good interaction between Cody and Gunther. Suit versus Suit. So Cody comes out there and, you know, good crowd reaction. And he uh, taught that this particular building, this particular place is a, a a great place for him. You know, this is where the We Want Cody chance initially started. And I forgot all about that, man. Time has flown so, so quickly. I forgot the We Want Cody chance started there. So, you know, we got some more We Want Cody chance. And it was just, you know, he was just happy to be there. And then, of course, Gunther comes out. And Gunther comes out, and you already kind of expected Gunther to be on his asshole time because the one thing I've loved what they've done with Gunther, especially as world champion, and just even before then, he is really good at tearing down an opponent verbally. Like, and he does it with a condescending smile. It's really good heel work. You don't see too many heels. They're so smug and so uppity. He knows he's better than everybody else. And he just talks down on you. Before he beats you now, he'll talk down to you, try to get into your head. So I, I do appreciate that. So he comes out there and you're expecting him to be like that. But actually, no. Um, Gunther comes out there and gives Cody praise. He says, there ain't too many people I respect in the business. But Cody, you're one of them. You, 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 you're a workhorse. You're, you're here in the States. You're here overseas. You're here in every country. You are a workhorse. You are a, and you know, pretty much told him he's a very great champion. And he's like, there's not many things I don't like about you. Except for one. And you knew it was coming. But he made a really good criticism here. It wasn't even really bad. He says, you you like to be everyone's darling. I mean, you got the situation with Kevin Owens. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't want you to go into this, you know, half-heartedly. I need the, be the very the best version of you, Cody. I need you to be 100% focused. I want the best version of you. But I do think, you know, a lot of people can agree his character is very friendly. He, you know, he likes to be friends with uh, a lot of people and it's it's kind of biting him right now. It's kind of hurting him in the long run. So I'm glad that he said that because it wasn't too far fetched of uh, a situation. Like, yeah, you just you're too friendly and you're you're seeing why that's becoming a problem. So Cody's like, well, you know, hey, that's that can be a detriment or my my, you know, my greatest blessing. That's just who I am, you know, but, you know, I've scouted you. I know who you are, what you're about. You're a very great champion. You're very good at what you do. You know, not many people are able to beat you, but I have noticed one thing about you. When people keep getting back up against you. And I'm really, and I noticed this even more at WrestleMania, when people don't give up, you tend to break. When you've thrown everything you can at someone and they still get back up, you tend to break. And he told him, he's like, look, when you dealing with me, we've never faced, we've, we've never faced, but I'm telling you now, you think you're in the deep end with me? Well, no, you're just in shallow water. And I'm I'm one of those people to, you know, basically not take lightly. I am him. I'm one of those people that don't give up. And I'm going, I can break you. Essentially, I can break you because I know you can't stop me. I like that. You see a little braggadocio. Let them know like, nah, bro. Uh-uh. So, Gunther. Taking exception to that. And I love when Gunther takes exception to shit. He just smiles at it. And he just acts so nonchalant about it. He's like, all right, you're right. We never faced. You know what I'm saying? 
You know, it, it, I, I expect nothing less than that from a, you know, from the secondary champion. Uh, and I was like, oh, he's taking a dig. He, he's calling him the secondary champion. I was like, oh, here we go. I personally would have said, if you really want to be honest, if you really want to be honest, they made that championship because no one could beat Roman. So if anything, that's really the secondary championship. But obviously, they didn't want to bury the belt like that. So I get it. So he was like, all right, I, I knew this side of you was going to come out. I'm secondary champion. All right, cool. I, I just want to remind you, I'm the guy that beat one of the most dominant champions of all time. I did that. So if you think you you it's about to be some light work, I just want you to know I'm the guy that beat one of the best champions of all time. So take that how you will. And then they went for the handshake. Once again, both of them in their little dress suits. So, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're doing the formalities right now. We don't know if it's going to ramp up. I hope it does. But they're doing the formalities right now. And as they're doing the handshake, the camera picks up. Well, instead of Gunther saying, I wish you the best of luck at Crown Jewel, he said, I wish me the best of luck. Basically playing off the fact that it's like, oh, well, shit, I'm going to have to wish myself the best of luck if I'm going against somebody like you. But he was smug about it. He was just like, you know, all right, I guess I wish myself the best of luck because you're just going to be this unstoppable force. Like, he didn't really take him seriously. That's what makes Gunther such a good heel champion. He's not there to yell at you. He's not there to intimidate you. He plays mind games with you. And he backs it up in the ring. I fucking love him as a heel. He is the next level final boss. Not to rip off the rock. But as a wrestler, he's the next final boss. We had Roman Reigns for the past three years. Now we have Gunther He's the guy to beat on Monday Night Raw and essentially the, the top heel to beat in WWE, honestly. I love it. Great segment. Looking forward to their match at Crown Jewel. I don't think it's going to be a clean finish because both guys can't eat a clean pin here. Uh, I do think it's going to be some shenanigans, most likely involving pro, uh, Kevin Owens. So we'll see how that plays out, but that was pretty cool to see. Also got to talk about the Jimmy uh situation so um what's his name i can't even think of his name kofi ended up having a one-on-one -on -one with braun breaker we knew that how that was going to end braun breaker ended up winning then xavier came out there for the save as braun breaker was about to do some more damage to kofi kingston but ultimately braun breaker ended up packing uh xavier up too then that's when jay uso comes out there gets his revenge from last week's uh, hits Braun Breaker with a few super kicks, hit him with a spear. Then Braun Breaker tried to get back into the ring, and Jay hits him with another super kick. So Braun uh ends up getting uh getting some uh getting some of his taste of his own medicine from last week, and Jay ends up standing tall. So we get uh, a backstage segment of Jay going to his locker room. He opens up the door and he sees Jimmy and Jimmy's trying to talk to him and Jay just walks off. He doesn't want to have anything to do with him. So we come back from a commercial break later on in the show and Jimmy's looking for Jay. He's trying to find him. He ends up finding him. Looks like Jay's about to leave and, you know, he's trying to talk to him and Jay's like, look, bro, I already said no. I, I, he, he basically doesn't want anything to do with Jimmy. He already knows what's going on. They're trying to get his help. He don't want any part of it. So he just tells Jimmy, I'm good on y'all. I'm good. No. So that's how that uh, their interaction ends. And I do think since they just announced that Jay versus uh, Braun Breaker is supposed to happen next week. I don't know. Is it too soon for the other bloodline, the Solo and, and Jacob and them to get involved? I don't know. I don't know yet. Because I do think it is relevant. I mean, he's only had the title for like a few weeks, if that. So I don't know if it's too soon to put the title strictly back on Braun Breaker. That's going to be interesting because I don't know. He could lose it with the, the obviously, the assist of this newer version of the bloodline. I don't know. So we'll see how that plays out. But overall, 
overall, uh, you know, it much not much really happened too much on the show. At the end, uh, you had Tiffany Stratton and uh, Liv, not Liv, Tiffany Stratton and uh, Rhea teaming up against uh, Raquel and um, and Liv Morgan. It was an okay match, solid match. Um, but Nia Jax ultimately comes in there, gets involved, attacks Rhea and uh, attacks Raquel essentially all in one blow. The ref calls off the match, obviously for disqualification because Nia comes into the mix and then proceeds to uh, essentially um, pack up Liv Morgan. I mean, completely squashes her, literally. I'm not even, it, that, not a figurative term. She beat the crap out of Liv Morgan, loved to see it, and he even squashed her in the corner. Like, Liv was done. And then she uh, pretty much tells Tiffany, hey, cash in right now. So it looks like Tiffany's about to cash in, but then Dominic comes in for the save to save Liv from getting cashed in on. They're teasing it. They're setting it up. Nia wants Tiffany to cash in on Liv, but it's not going to happen, I think. Liv is going to somehow beat Nia, obviously with the help of everybody else being involved uh, on, on her behalf. But I do think that Tiffany's going to cash in on Nia and we're going to have a new champion in Tiffany Stratton. It makes sense to go that route. So we'll see how it plays out. But overall, like I said, middle of the road, uh, Monday Night Raw, loving the two hours of get in, get out. Even if it wasn't a fully eventful show, we got the good stuff that we needed to get in, and I'm okay with it. But, hey, comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite part of the show. Um, also, what are y'all looking forward to um, going forward with the whole Cody and Gunther match that they have set up? You know, are you guys enjoying them building that up and just the slow teases, them building the, uh, you know, the the return of jay joining the bloodline like how are you guys enjoying some of these storylines and how they're formulating y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all love sport road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace